uh, channel. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to the Vintage Speed Garage channel. I know I've taken a little bit of a break here. Uh, I was uh, needing, needing some time off from doing all of the daily editing and videos, so I'm going to try and get back into the stream of things here with, uh, with our new project. And today what I'm going to do is give you an introduction to the project, show you what I've been working on for the last six months. It's been a, it's been a full thrash to get the truck running and driving. Um, but this is, uh, this is our 1970 uh, Ford F100 bump side. I picked this up about six months ago uh, here locally for a good deal. Uh, and what really appealed to me to, about the truck was that the Crown Vic swap had already been done in the front. Uh, still had the stock Ford 9 inch in the back, stock suspension, um, no drivetrain at all, motor transmission was gone. Uh, but it was a very solid, good looking truck, uh, not a lot of body damage, all the trim still intact. Mm -hmm and it was a good base project for what I was what I was wanting to do. I already had a donor Crown Vic, I already had the wheels that are on the truck, um, and I had, before I found this one, I had found a 68 uh, bump side that was going to be my platform for doing, doing exactly what I've done here to this truck, but um, this one came up and it was a lot cleaner. Uh, it had all the full moldings on it, which I really like. Um, I, I think if you start with a nice uh, initial project uh, or, or in initial vehicle for your project, you're going to end up with a nicer finished product. The motor that I selected for the truck is, is one that's been ignored, I think, a lot by, uh, by custom car guys and uh, modifiers because uh, they have kind of a bad reputation. Um, the motor that's in the truck here is a 6.8 liter Triton V10, um, made it up to a TR. 3650 Tremec uh, five-speed transmission. Um, the reason I selected that drivetrain is uh, after a night of standing around with the buddies, we we're drinking some beers, talking uh, talking cars like we always do, and uh, the the topic came up of of what motors would we like to work on that we haven't done before, and um, the one that I've always wanted to put into something was the Triton V10. I thought the motor had a lot of potential. It's basically a, a 6.8 liter. Uh, motor that's built on the same platform as the 5.4 and the 4.6 has the same uh, same dimensions as a 5.4 liter, just two extra cylinders. Uh, it's got a forged bottom end, which is really nice for for higher RPM uh, horsepower. And I thought that taking one of these V10s and doing some some tuning to it uh, could unleash uh, a lot of a lot of potential, a lot of horsepower. So that's. That's why I decided to pick one up uh, for this project. I found a screaming hot deal down in Long Beach on the motor here that uh, that's in the truck. Uh, it was a it was a locked up seized motor that had 600 miles on it. Um, the guy I bought it from uh, was was the fleet manager down at the uh, at the docks in Long Beach, and they had just bought this van. Um, and uh, 600 miles after buying the van, somebody knocked the oil filter off of it and locked up the crank. So I pulled the whole motor apart polished out the crank, polished out the cams, went through everything and, uh, and rebuilt the motor from the ground up uh, with uh, mostly new components. Um, as much, I, I reused as many things as I could because the original motor only had 600 miles on it, so coils, injectors, uh, you know, the cylinder heads, all of that stuff was in good condition uh, and didn't need to be rebuilt from the ground up. Just need to be cleaned up, polished up, new bearings thrown in it, new rings, um, quick hone on the bores and uh, that was all that was needed to get this thing back together. One of the best things about these Ford Modular motors, uh, the 4.6, the 5.4, the 5.0 and the 6.8 is that you can share components between them. This particular 6.8 has a lot of 4.6 parts on it, a lot of 5.4 parts on it uh, and having that interchangeability was great uh, so that I could fit the motor into the cross member, um, fit, fit a proper oil filter stand that would clear my headers. Those kinds of things were nice to be able to interchange the parts between the, the 4.6 and 5.4 and the 6.8. Uh, I was able to swap a lot of things around and make the motor configured the way I wanted it to be, uh, but still using stock parts. Um, I think that this motor has a lot of tuning potential and I think unleashing uh, 50, 50 more horsepower is going to be pretty easy. Um, just in the two valve configuration that the motor is in now. Uh, I do have some three valve heads and cams for this. I've got a three valve timing cover. I'm putting together uh, all of the other little parts and pieces uh, that I need for the three valve swap. And once this is um, worked out, all the kinks are worked out of it, 
and it's driving reliably and making good horsepower and initial tuning has been done, uh, the next major step on the motor is going to be the three valve swap. And just bolting on those three valve heads should get me another 50 to 60 horse, I think, pretty easily. Uh, the intake manifold is a much more free-flowing um, upper high RPM type of intake manifold. Uh, most guys that do this three valve swap uh, in, a, in an excursion or some other big truck, an F-350 or something that has the V10 in it, um, they're sticking with stock computers and automatic transmissions and uh, they have some difficulties in doing the three valve swap because they're limited in what they can what they can use uh, for throttle bodies and for transmission control and that kind of thing. Uh, because I'm not using any of that um, I'm going to stick with the two valve computer when I do my three valve swap. So I'm only swapping out the three valve mechanical parts. Uh, the, cam, the, the cams will be fixed. They will not be adjustable. Uh, same with the intake manifold. It won't be adjustable. I think there's plenty of bottom end torque so I don't need the variable uh, intake that modulates between horsepower and torque uh, as you drive it. I'm just going to leave it in the full horsepower configuration and try and make it as fleet free flowing as possible. And uh, I've got plenty of torque here. Uh, I think in the bottom end of this 6.8. And having all that torque makes this truck a real kick in the ass to drive because uh, it's about half the weight of an excursion um, and with the 5 speed you can you can really wind out uh, the upper RPMs and, and get the most out of out of this V10 and I'll tell you what it's no slouch uh, you know the, the truck really does move out uh, I'm hoping down the road here once I get some tuning in it um, and spend some time working out some of the kinks uh, to, to take it to the track and get some track times on it I don't think it's going to be cr really fast but uh, for, for a bone stock 6.8 the thing uh, the thing is a really good time to drive and hopefully I don't yard sale the rear axle here doing a big burnout or something but uh, um, so far it's been holding up to the abuse of those spinning those 295 tires that are on the Mustang wheels and um, I think I think we're gonna be alright at this point uh, if I haven't fragged the thing yet uh, I'm probably not going to so far I've been able to use all Ford parts on my truck which I really like you know I want this 6.8 to, uh, to to perform and free up some horsepower so I think the Motes quarter horse is going to be fun to play with and I think there is a ton of potential in this motor that um, not many people have tapped into yet so enough talking I'm gonna walk you around show you the uh, show you the engine compartment and the interior and the rear axle on the truck uh, give you kind of a, a quick overview of it uh, my plan today is to pull off the side moldings in preparation for the next uh, major fabrication job here on this truck and that's going to be uh, converting the long bed into a mid-length bed I'm going to take a foot out of the front of it uh, and shorten it up a little bit I'm also going to pull the, the rear axle just a little bit further forward in the wheel tub and shorten the wheelbase just a touch and I think is going to make an already good looking truck just that much better so let's take a look at it so here is that Mustang tank as I was talking about I basically have it bolted to the bottom of the frame rails with a with the reinforcement flange that goes all the way around to to sandwich the uh, the flange on the fuel tank to the frame rail and that works pretty well these are the Explorer leaf springs that I'm currently running uh, up here you can see the the C notch that was welded into the frame uh, as well as the sway bar mounts that mount the uh, mount the sway bar everything clears pretty well under here um, there is still some finish work to do on that but for now uh, things are things are working pretty well and so here in the front of the axle tube you can see the front leaf spring hanger that uh, has been raised up and relocated um, everything on the truck has been kept up above the bottom of the frame rail uh, because at some point I may uh, airbag the truck and I'd like to be able to lay it flat so if you know I, if I get to that at some point down the road uh, that was my thought was to run the exhaust and everything up above the frame rail so that the lowest point on the whole truck is the frame and the cross members so here you can see the the full two and a half inch exhaust and the X pipe uh, at the cross member here I did have to raise the transmission and the oil pan I had to shorten uh, so that it would be above the cross member and not be hanging down in the front here you can see uh, see how things clear um, got plenty of oil pan clearance uh, good clearance on the power steering rack and pinion um, 
and the front lower control arms are parallel to the ground. So everything as far as angles go looks pretty good. Um, this is the this is the oil cooler mount uh, I was talking about. So if down the road water temperatures and engine temps become a problem, I can plumb in uh, two oil lines here that I've got into the stock oil filter mount and uh, and plumb in oil cooling in addition to the the engine cooling that's going on through the radiator. One of the things I'm most excited about is taking this truck to its first car show here next month and uh, getting people's reactions when they see these big long three-foot valve covers uh, sticking out from under the hood of this uh, old Ford uh, F100. I think uh, I think a lot of people are going to do a double take on this on this motor setup. The 19-inch uh, Ford Performance Pack Mustang wheels look really good uh, on the truck. Um, I'm tucking, uh, tucking about half the tread here on the, or half the sidewall on the front and in the back we're tucking uh, tucking just the top here of the rim so uh, it sits sits pretty good at this point in the inside I'm running an Intellitronics digital dash Sorry for the fan noise. I currently have the fan wired on full speed, which that's going to change here at some point. And my check engine light is on, but uh, I really like the look of this dash. And this video really wouldn't be complete without at least a startup, right? So I'm going to start the truck up. Unfortunately, I can't take you guys on a driving video right now because uh, when I when I first put the tank in, I, I put two or three gallons of fuel in it uh, and toss the bed on and uh, I don't have the filler neck connected to the tank so right now there's no way for me to put any fuel in the tank I didn't want to cut a hole in the floor of the of the bed so that I could access the filler neck so um, right now I've got no way to put gas in it and last drive I took it on I was having a bunch of fuel cut issues at high RPMs and uh, and it actually stalled out on me because of fuel. So uh, I think I've got enough here to give you guys at least a start up and a couple revs, but uh, but I can't uh, I can't take you on a driving video yet. Although I've been working on the filler neck, the bed's coming off here for shortening. So once it goes back together, I'll be able to put some gas in it. And we can uh, we can go for a ride. So there you go guys, hopefully I covered some of your questions as to the components that I chose to put this truck together and and why I chose what I chose and how I did things. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions about the way I did things, please put them down in the comment section. I love to hear from you guys. Uh, let me know if you think I did good or if you think I did bad or did something wrong. Uh, I'd appreciate all the feedback I can get. Next step for the truck here, uh, as I mentioned in the video, is shortening the bed. Uh, the bed's a little too long for my liking, so I'm going to shorten, uh, shorten the bed, shorten the frame, shorten the rear drive shaft, uh, brake lines, exhaust, uh, everything that's associated with that. And hopefully here by next week we'll have, uh, have a little bit better looking truck in my opinion. 
after that hopefully I'll have a filler neck so I can put some fuel in the tank and actually start taking this thing for longer and longer drives and get it on the road where we can take some driving video and, and some, some distance video so you can see a little bit better what the truck looks like. I know it's really hard to capture these wheels. Uh, black wheels are really hard to get uh, looking properly in, in video. Uh, they look great in person. Uh, it's one of those things where you're going to have to see this truck I think in person to really appreciate it. So Kevin, if you're watching, keep getting those parts together man, let's get that thing done. And if you guys want to see that OBS video on Kevin's truck, post, post it down in the comments. Let's get him going. So for me here at Vintage Speed Garage guys, thank you for watching. Uh, please let people know, uh, friends of yours that might be interested in this kind of content, uh, to subscribe to the channel. I, I can use all the subscribers I can get. So if you want to see more of this kind of content here from Vintage Speed Garage, the V10, bump side, the, the 71 bump side that's getting a 4.6, Crown Vic swap, uh, wheels and tires, all of that good suspension stuff's going to be going on here on that truck soon. Uh, the 68 bump side, yeah that's right, we did a 4.6 swap on a 68 bump side as well. At the same time we were doing the 70, I'm going to get some video of that on Matt's truck. Uh, and if you like the OBS videos, please click like and subscribe and we're going to bring more content to you. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.